Hey, uh, Doozer Shop here. Uh, weekend morning, I want to thank everybody who uh, uh, gave me some views there on uh, the first start on the planer, uh, the Rockford. Uh, I thought I'd call it a first start video. I mean, it's not an engine, but you know, it's kind of a first start and see how many hits it would get from the algorithm. Anyhow, um, <clears throat> been working on the planer some more. Um, I took back all the oil to the recycling center uh, yesterday uh, and uh, dumping off the five gallon buckets and man there's water in every single bucket uh, you know so that was good to get changed and I found some water damage uh, let me kind of take you um, I'll, I'll take you handheld and I'll kind of show you a few things I've been working on with the planer so uh, let's go all right, so I don't have a bulb in it yet, but I put a lamp on the planer, right? So um, it's like a, an old-fashioned factory lamp, gas station lamp, whatever you guys want to think of it as. Um, and I needed something. Let me take your own. I'll uh, give you a high shot of it. The lamp was thrown out in a dumpster next to a local pizzeria that had uh, remodeled into something else or whatever. So uh, I snagged it and it had a, um, uh, a fluorescent lamp inside and the ballast was toast. And uh, I could have ordered a ballast, but you know what? I just put a porcelain socket in there. That's an old porcelain socket. Uh, it must be, you know, uh, uh, this is 60 years old. But anyhow, uh, got that converted over. It's actually a modern lamp, I think, but it is uh, it is porcelain uh, coated, right? So, pretty cool. Um, I got just, uh, uh, you know, a conduit box, an LC, I think they call this one. <clears throat> So uh, I got that working up, and uh, if you look down, I made a, uh, I guess a pipe flange, you'd say, uh, to mount it. It's three quarter inch, uh, you know, a rigid solid, not solid, rigid conduit, not bendable conduit, um, not EMT, but. So that's kind of an interesting little uh, guy. I had. Uh, I got two strengthening ribs. There were three holes in the planer uh, over arm, and uh, uh, I they, they weren't exactly on a, an equal pattern. But uh, what I did is I uh, I made a pattern out and I just transferred the the holes and got it centered up. <clears throat> That's a, a coupling fitting. I welded it to the base and I. Um, uh, TIG brazed uh, the wings on it, the strengthening ribs. So, uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, but uh, I just want to show you guys that. Um, I thought it was appropriate time period, something, something, you know, whatever, um, for that. So uh, once I get the lamp in there, oh, I, I gotta take your own shit. The switch. <clears throat> I wasn't sure how to do a switch. I wanted something kind of vintage, kind of neat. Um, something to fit, right? It's got to go along. So there's an electrical box there. And I made a bracket. Uh, actually, that, that bracket is off of... Uh, see how it's angled? That bracket's off of a wheel guard for a Cincinnati number two... Uh, you step up. Kind of a neat little angle. Um, that was a wheel guard for a Cincinnati uh, internal grinder attachment. Nice quarter inch uh, steel. So the two holes diagonally were in the bridge, um, bridge port. <laughs> the Rockford column and the uh, there was one hole in the uh, the box I drilled another hole. So uh, I kind of matched um, uh, patterns uh, and drilled my own. 
Here's another shot of that. Um, hard to tell. You can see if you level off the, the, the boxway of the uh, crosshead, the, uh, the arm coming off uh, the main casting there is at a 10 degree downslope, right? Uh, in reference to the floor or level or whatever you want to call it. So I had to make this um, pipe flange at a 10 degree angle in one plane, uh, 10 degrees in one plane, uh, tilted. So let me just kind of zoom, zoom, zoom you this way. So that actually is, those, those two tabs are about a bit different. One happened to have a hole because I used scrap pieces of metal. Um, not super fluid with my TIG brazing yet, but you can see the weld at the base looks much better. But anyhow, yeah, that's at a 10 degree angle. That's why it was sort of a special uh, little dealio. So anyhow, uh, let me take you down. I'll show you something else that I've been doing here. <sighs> yep, thing is just fabulous. I love this thing. Having so much fun playing with this guy. And uh, I don't. Th I, I don't. I think I'll run a separate uh, plug-in cord because this is uh, three phase in a ground. I don't have a, a transformer in there. Don't want to use the uh, ground for a neutral. So. Whatever. Um, I don't know if I showed this. I made a, a single T-nut and uh, I want to make a couple more and I got a design in mind for this. Um, three quarter slot, probably use five eighths thread. So that's gonna be uh, consuming some of my time. Um, power feed, all right. So I think that's power feed and I forget, maybe that might be power feed or something and, you know. Anyhow, this is kind of how that works. Let me get you down here. Um, that uh, crane water valve <laughs> is what it looks like. Um, that's hydraulic oil in. And what it does is there's a, uh, a piston in there in a gear rack and there's a, uh, a pinion gear in there right and there's you know the power feed shaft and how this works is it it indexes uh, you know this the uh, the side head handle it, it it powers that and it powers the whole rail and a bunch of junk and it just indexes that across each stroke it goes over a step over a step over a step over so it's not continuous feed so said all that because how this works is uh, the piston goes back and forth with the table, right? It's back and forth. So the rack goes back and forth. That's just a stroke limiter for the rack, so that sets your step over. That's how that works. So that shaft has got to go a little bit at a time, you know, for, for uh, advance and step over. Um, inside there is a one-way bearing, or actually it's a diode sprag, uh, one-way clutch, I should say. Um, thought it was a one-way bearing, I got it apart, and it's a uh, uh, one-way sprag. Like you'd see in an automatic transmission. But anyhow, um, you can see that's the supply, that's the drain back to the sump. And uh, let me kind of show you. It's about inch and a half or so off the bottom so that bottom area is always going to have a bath of oil so this oil having so much water in it uh, the water kind of accumulated in there because it can never fully drain what gets in there stays in there so it rusted the diode sprag the the clutch sprag whatever you want to call it so when it was stroking you know initially the shaft was twisting back and forth, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. Like the diode sprag was seized. So I was like, okay, if it's seized, and I can see that, I got a pipe wrench with a, some rags folded up to try and uh, grip, grip this <clears throat> and uh, break it loose. Well, it broke loose 
but it didn't work. It, it just, I broke everything loose and it was just like in neutral spinning. So it went from spinning back and forth, back and forth, to spinning not at all. Um, and it's supposed to increment each time the table makes a, makes a pass, does a stroke. So, uh, I don't know how much you can see up there, probably not a lot. Let's see here. All right. Trying to get a good shot. So, oh, there's the gear rack. All right, you can see the gear rack up in there. Come on. Anyhow, whatever. You get the idea. Um, so that's the uh, the internals of that. And like I said, that limits the stroke. Um, so. Uh, I'll give you a close up here. Don't know how to show this. This knob is the table forward reverse knob for the power feed on a Kearney and Trekker um, horizontal mill. Used to be just a ball knob screwed on there, but I wanted a longer handle. And this thing is so, uh, you know, hand polished from, uh, you know, so many years of, you know, men's hands touching that thing in the shop. I uh, just polished it uh, pretty nicely. Don't know how the camera's focusing, but whatever. So I I, I, I let that in about three eighths of an inch, and I, I silver uh, silver soldered it in there. And this is just threaded for I think whatever three eighths fine thread or whatever it was. But it uh, it makes a good little. Oh, here you go. I clean this up a, a little bit. Come on, I got the lamp on. I'm gonna use this sucker. It tells you the, uh, the feet per inches per minute or something, something. Kind of neat. Tells you the serial number, yada, yada. So so that's cool. And I put some, uh, you know that CMD extreme pressure grease? It's really thick. I put some behind that dial. And this is the friction adjustment. And I think I might have, uh, I put a wave washer in there. Um, you're supposed to tighten it and lock it and I kind of would rather have a spring washer to hold tension and then put grease behind here and that's the sliding surface area so it, I know you guys you can't do feel a vision here but it feels so smooth for the uh, speed adjustment so that's that's all good um, and just so you know that valve and return line are for the uh, the clapper uh, box which and it put a new o-ring in there um, and that's it uh, it's fed by that that's actually a gate valve I would have thought it'd be a plug valve or a needle valve but that's a gate valve but that's how that's fed so the pieces parts parts pieces don't you know I got cleaned up over here and I got my bench cleaned off Congratulate me on that, right? Mostly cleaned and I just, yeah, this is so much garbage here. So that is the gear, the uh, pinion gear, I guess you'd say, that meshes with the rack. And this is the drum for the sprag, right? So there's a hardened surface in there. This was all rusty. I mean, this looked like the freaking Titanic. It really did. So this is a hardened surface. It's got some pitting, but whatever. Um, those are the rollers for the diode sprag. This thing was rusty. Now, this is the cage where all these go in there, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I had this uh, dipped in phosphoric acid for a while and I wire brushed it and da da da. Maybe I should take this to. I, can, I think I can have this brass plated, uh, maybe. I don't know, we'll see. Um, just for. I mean, it doesn't need corrosion protection now because it changed the oil and, and it should never happen in my lifetime, but I don't know. I'm a, I like to redesign stuff. So that, I can show you, this thing is just the bottom base for it all. So what activates, uh, actuates the, uh, the rollers is this uh, 
eight-sided stop sign looking piece. Octagon. So that's the ramp, right? And this would be inside. And it, you know, when it goes to the point or closer to the point, it pushes out. Because uh, the way it's sized, it won't. Let me just show you. All right? Come on, bologna sandwich, one handed camera. Oh, you bloated piece of junk. Okay. So that's how they are, right? You know, they just kind of, it's a cage, right? It's a, it's a roller cage. It's like a bearing, but kind of not really. So that's how that works, right? And it goes on this spliny uh, thing. So there's a key that goes on the, uh, the shaft inside there. Um, keyway, and there's the key. There's the keyway. A little spacer in there or whatever. It's got this beefy spline, right? So I don't really know. This is just the base, the bottom, right? And it's like there, right there. So it's got, oh, it's round. That's why it's got the key. So that's keyed in there. In the actual, there's set screws. Come on, puppy. There and on the key slot. That's what attaches it to the machine, right inside that, right at the bottom of the uh, that casting I showed you that was opened up. Um, Rockford puts their numbers on everything. How, man, all companies should do that. It's good practice. So that there's threads and there's like a floating spacer. So all this hunk of my junk goes on, and I think it goes. Uh, this bottom thing goes down. Is that right? Well, this, yeah, I'll just kind of show you for. So that goes in there. And there's a spring that's got to go on here. And I, I got a new spring I'm making. I just got to bend the ear out. This spring was tacoed. And uh, so that goes there. This drop in, right? That drops in. And you got to put the spring in and these rolling pins. Da 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 da. And then this is like a. A bearing nut, but it's a, it's like a bolt, or you know, screw, not a bolt, but yeah, whatever. And that holds it all together. All right. So what's got to happen is um, I got to make a new dowel pin that the spring hooks on, right? And uh, make a new spring, so we got that on the run. There's the key. That's going to be a little lathe work, no problem. Put the rollers in, and then this sucker fits down, right? That's how this would go, and sit just like that. And this is upside down, so the, the gear end would go up inside the machine, mesh with that piston, put your key and your set screws uh, in there, and this would be on the bottom, and then just put the cover back on. Right, and uh, where's the cover? On the Pratt and Whitney is the bottom cover with the bearing. Oh, let's go look at that. Yeah, we need to look at that. That's kind of cool, kind of neat. So, <clears throat> and my other clapper parts are in there. And uh, this is the original flange from that uh, lamp. So, this thing was completely rusted. I mean, this thing was just brown slime because it was that, uh, you know. Sure would be nice to have a sealed bearing, or a shielded one at least. Probably shielded. Look, somebody put four punch marks on there to maybe tighten the bore up. Who knows? But the gasket's still good. Looks like an asbestos gasket. It's got a little flangey flange uh, alignment doodly hoos there. But check this out. The whole bottom is retained with a, uh, a soft plug. And it's even in crooked, right? Look at that sucker. That thing's been hammered in crooked. and But man, it didn't leak oil. It did not leak oil a bit. Didn't leak a drop. So, what I was thinking of doing, I think you, you gotta pull this cover to get that bearing out if it would, you know, you're the easy, easy way to go. I'm gonna pop that out while it's mostly out and 
like drill a little quarter five sixteenths hole in there and braze on an eighth inch pipe thread or a quarter inch pipe thread uh, fitting so I could put a, a drain cock on there and if I had a drain cock then I could you know eventually or periodically drain this because uh, the uh, the schmooky oil builds up in there so um, I, I, they maintain a level for some reason maybe I could even make that the drain because the drain is like a little bit above this maybe I could make the bottom of that the drain and just run it in to a lower port in the, uh, the casting because um, it's going to get oil I don't think it needs to be bathed in oil if oil is constantly being trickled down from that piston moving I think that would be that'd be a better design is to drain oil from the lowest spot because it's going to it's going to have enough so that's an easy pop it out uh, drill it maybe pop it in the lathe drill it center it and, and braze on a uh, like I said quarter inch pipe fitting or eighth inch or whatever I don't know so that's that's kind of what I wanted to show you there um, that's uh, what I've been working on for the uh, the Rockford uh, planer so uh, we'll get back working and uh, till next time do your shop